Good morning, guys. It is Monday, January the 11th, 2021. Welcome back to week 21 of second grade. Wow. I believe it's in 21 weeks. I can't. But it's Miss Bland. It's a good day to have a good day, and we plan to have a good day. So, <clears throat> thank you for joining us. <clears throat> if you're here, I need to know you're here. So, a great way for me to know you're here is for you to complete an assignment in Seesaw, send me a text that you're working hard or some artifacts from your work, from your packet, a page. <clears throat> your virtual rules have not changed since school began. They're just a little different when you're watching the video. <clears throat> I don't recommend sitting beside Big Brother if he's playing Fortnite. And I don't recommend going and sitting in front of the TV of your favorite TV show because you're probably not gonna wanna listen to Miss Bland. You're gonna wanna listen to your favorite show. So choose wisely. Our SDL lesson is from Ms. Vester for today. And it is about being an active two-way street at listening. And we want to talk about being a reflective listener. That's a big word, but it has a real simple meaning. To teach children to listen with complete attention and reflect back to what the other person has said. So reflective listening is listening to someone with your complete attention and then repeating what they have said in your own words. If your reflection is correct, they might say, yes, that's what I said. If that's not quite right, they might say, no, that's not what I said. Reflective listening shows that you have empathy for the other person. You understand how they are feeling and they feel that you are supporting them or you're listening. So it says, watch the clip from inside out and think about <clears throat> who was the better listener. So it says, let's look at our three questions before we watch our clip. Who helped Bing Bong feel better, joy or sadness, and why? Who had who was showing reflective listening, joy or sadness, and how do you know? And the last one, show your reflective listening skills. What did sadness bring to Bing Bong? So let's watch. Oh no, Miss Bland closed it. <clears throat> Hang tight, my darlings. I'm so sorry. I must have closed it after Zoom this morning. I apologize. If you've not seen the movie In and Out, you should watch it. Maybe we'll figure out a way to watch it together when we come back together. Here we go. All right, are we ready? Here we go. If I can go back to the beginning and be ready. There we go. The stuffed animal hall of fame. My rocket. Wait, well, I was still using that rocket. Watch carefully. Let's see who is the more reflective listener. Sadness. Sounds amazing. I bet Riley liked it. 
Oh, she did. We were best friends. Yeah, it's sad. I'm okay now. Come on. The train station is this way. That's the key to what she said. Listen again. He was sad and I listened to what he had to say. When someone is sad or upset, being a reflective listener, listening to what upset them is a great way. So look at your three questions at the bottom. Discuss them with whoever may be doing your schoolwork with you or just think about the answers to yourself. Pause here to think. Awesome. Your affirmation words for sentences for this week. I've got this. I know sometimes it seems like a lot of work. It seems like a lot to do, but I promise you, you got this and you're going to be amazing at it. We're going to have you ready for third grade, even in COVID. I am capable of so much and you are. You guys prove that to me every week by getting everything done and turned in and finished. And I know it's not always easy. And I know mom and dad's have to work and you have to go to sitters and daycares but you make it happen and that's amazing. So you're totally okay. <clears throat> We're back to spelling words. Yay, spelling words. So you need to turn to a clean page in your notebook. Up at the top of that page, you're gonna put unit 17 and today's date. You are going to write down your 17, excuse me, <laughs> it's unit 17, your 12 words for this week. You are going to underline the sound that that word addresses. Your new 12 words are woods, true, new, football, argue, understood, blue, clue, jewel, through, bookshelf, and blueberry. Take time to pause here and copy down those 12 words. As you copy the word, notice if you see me up in the corner of your screen, I wrote my words and I underlined the O, the double O, the E-W, or the U-E that each of those words address. You will do the same. Pause here to come. <clears throat> Great, glad to have you back. We'll spend this week addressing those words and making sure that we're ready for Friday's test. That ooh sound is gonna be a tricky one because for instance, when you look at the words, excuse me, sorry about that. When you look at the words blue and clue, you'll be like, oh, blue and clue, they rhyme, so I can spell them the same. Because most of the time when I see a rhyming word, it spells the same. Ooh, don't do that on Friday. That's going to be dangerous. Blue and clue do sound the exact same, but they are spelled with two different endings for that sound spelling pattern. So you got to be careful. You're going to have to study your words. <clears throat> English language arts for this week. We are dealing with uh, integration of science. And so we're going to be talking about the moon and the sun. And we're going to start today with the sun. The passage for today, let me tell you, Miss Plant, sorry. I forgot to put it in your packet. And I make the packet for the whole second grade. So none of the second graders got it. My fault. I'm sorry. But we do have it here. And it is also in Seesaw to help you do your questions. But we're going to read it together. And then you can read it again in Seesaw to answer. Move side of the way. It's expository text. That's our genre for today. We will today talk about the day part of this text. It's a two-page um, text from the textbook, but I didn't want to send that big heavy book home, so we're just going to use the active board, um, active flip chart. So it is the genre is expository text, which means we're going to learn something from what we're going to read. It is not just meant to entertain us. It is not just meant to make us laugh or to make us happy, it is to teach us something. And today we're gonna to learn about the sun. Tomorrow we will focus on the moon. So it says read about the daytime and nighttime skies. Today we will only read about the daytime. <clears throat> Day to night, your alarm clock rings, beep, beep, beep. You turn it off, stretch and get out of bed. You look out the window and see the daytime sky. The daytime sky, the sky is light today. It is blue. It is blue, sorry, my phone. It is blue with white clouds and the bright sun. The sun is the brightest object in the sky. It looks small, but that is because Earth is far 
it is far from earth, excuse me. So it says, sometimes the daytime sky has clouds. We've been outside some days and seen tons of beautiful, fluffy clouds. We've even done work this year in your science lessons about the three different kinds of clouds that we can even see. But every day doesn't have clouds. And some days have more clouds than others. But what we're focusing on is that sunlight that we come through. It talks about the sun being the brightest object in the sky, but it also talks about that it's light. It's when we're light outside. So when you wake up, you don't usually wake up at night unless you want those people that you played that Fortnite all night long. Hmm. And now when you wake up, it is dark again. But more than likely when you wake up, whether it's to do your work, get on Zoom, go to school, hang out with mom and dad, whatever it may be, or if they're getting up to go to work and you got to go to grandma's, it's, it's daylight, it's daytime. The sun, the sun is actually a star. Did you know that? Like all stars, it is a huge ball of hot gases. The sun is much larger than the earth. It is the earth's closest star, but there are, all, there are many stars in the sky. In fact, there are too many stars in the sky to count. We cannot see them during the day because the sun's light makes our sky too bright. Hello, sun. Goodbye, sun. If you watch the sun all day, it would look like, a, like it moves across the sky, but the sun does not move. Even though you cannot feel it, Earth is turning. It makes one full turn in 24 hours or one day. So one day is 24 hours long. For about half of those hours, the place where you live faces the sun. It is daytime. The rest of the time, your home is not facing the sun. Then it is dark. When the sun is shining on your home, it is daytime. When the earth turns, when your home faces away from the sun, it is nighttime. So that is our text for today. We're not going to do nouns and verbs, so let's move that. But I want you to pause here and reread this text. Why is it important to reread? Because we have questions next and we always want to be able to reread for that. Questions on the next page that we are going to answer. Um, you have an option that I guess the Zoom kids really don't have because you guys could back up in your video and use this to answer your questions in your packet. Um, the kids on Zoom with me in the morning, they didn't have that option. So this piece of um, text is also in Seesaw because they needed a place that they could go and see the text for today too. So it is in Seesaw for them. But you have the wonderful option of being able to just back up a little bit in your video, here it is, and find your answers here. To get them started, we did the first three together. We talked about going back in my story and finding answers. Now, I don't want you to draw lines on your computer screen or anything like that. But for the rest of the week after tomorrow, you will have your text and we will do text evidence underlining together. But I did underline it as we went through to find our answers so that we can make the connection that when we have a text, we can look at the text, we can look at our question, and we can find our text evidence answers. Text evidence answers need to come straight from the text. <clears throat> so you may pause here. We'll go to writing, sorry. You may pause here. Actually pause here and use this text to answer your questions if you don't want to have to go back through or if you've already done your seesaw for today and this part will not will cause you not to have to go and log back in. So you can use this one. Pause here if that's your choice. If you rather use the one in Seesaw, it's the exact same, totally your call. All right, writing. When you are an efficient, awesome second grade writer, you're gonna follow some good writing techniques. One of those is, a couple of those are listed on this chart. Start sentences with a capital letter. Oh my gosh, super important. Finger spaces, look at that finger. Look at your finger. Your finger's not quite as big as my finger, but look at your finger. If you would put, even if it's half of your finger, between your words, it would make it so much easier to read. Now, we don't need this much space between words. I don't want you to put your whole hand. So you put the in a big space, cat, big space. No, it needs to be just normal spaced out. Look at these words. There's space between them so that we know where one word stops and another word begins. You should do the same when you're writing. Punctuation, periods, question marks, exclamation points, whatever you're using. And then of course, it should match your picture. And today you have a picture that your story needs to match. Meet Elmo, I love Elmo. And so Elmo's decided he wants to snow. Let me tell you about Miss Blaine and her snow. I did a snow dance. In person, I did a snow dance on Friday. On Thursday night, we did a snow dance and we did a snow dance on Friday night, hoping we would get some snow. 
Miss Bryan has two brothers that live in Asheville, North Carolina, which is in the mountains. And they sent me pictures of beautiful snow and I didn't get any, so I was sad. So Elmo's gonna help, he's gonna help us start our snow dance again. So it says, write a story about Elmo's day in the snow. You should have at least five. It is still the magic number from last week. Um, five sentences. Your teacher will be looking for strong sentences. <clears throat> number one, capital letters <clears throat> in the right places. Number two, and a good use of periods and punctuation marks. That will be number three. If you need a break or you need to stretch before we go over your math pages for today, you may do so. I will tell you that math today is a review, so it's not very long. So if you can hang with me, you can. But if you need to pause, pause here. Welcome back. Let's go. It's math time. One, two, three, four, five. So we're talking today about 10 more, 10 less, one more, one less. And we're going to talk a really quickly about it because you're going to say, hey, Ms. Bland, I thought you said we were starting module four. We are. But the beautiful thing about it was we started module four before you went home. But there were some that were ready to go and some that weren't. And then there's some of you that I haven't seen since the beginning of December and some that I saw in the middle of December. And I haven't seen anybody in January. So we decided as a second grade team, it was better to start module four all over. So here we go. So one of the strategies, your hundreds board. Look at the hundreds board, the number above is 10 less, the number below is 10 more, the number to the left is one less, the number to the right is one more. Just a couple of examples, it makes that T shape, we talked about that plus sign, that little T, whatever you wanna call it, that shows us the numbers we are referring to. So we make the number 23, we add 10 more, some people are visual. Visual means you need to see a picture. You just can't imagine in your head what this would really look like. So you need a picture. And when you see the picture, you're like, oh, well, that makes sense now. I had 23. It says it was 10 more. So I added 10 and now I have 33. And then if I had 23 and it said 10 less, I would take a 10 away. It would leave me with 13. Some people like to see it the math way. We look at this problem, 48 minus 10 was 38. How did I know? Because I drew out 48, I took away my 10, I marked it out, and that left me with 38. So that's a different way that I can do 10 more and 10 less using the same method. So your packet pages. For your packet pages, this is great review because it covers all the different ways that Ms. Bland is expecting you to be able to show and represent 10 more and 10 less. It's some great work and great review as we jump back into module four. So the first page is asking you to complete the pattern. The pattern has started for you. Your job is to finish it. Here, Ms. Bland has done the first three with the boys and girls this morning, and I decided to leave them for you guys. So let's look at it, 76, 77, 78. We're counting. You learned to count when you were little, and you could probably count to 100 before you ever stepped foot in Bailey Elementary. So that one was easy. You're just finishing that line. now. 15, 25, 35. Oh my goodness, I realize I'm counting 10 more every time. So my five isn't changing. We know every one of them is going to end in a five. But what's changing is the tens place. I'm going up, so I got to keep counting up. So there was a one, and then a two, and then a three. And so Ms. Blaine added a four, and a five, and a six, and a seven, and eight, and nine, and ten. I'm following the exact same pattern. Same thing here. This time, look carefully. This should remind you of New Year's Eve, 26, 25, 24, 23. Oh my goodness, we're counting backwards. And so we are counting backwards. So make sure when you come to the ones that are counting backwards, you take your time and look carefully. Now, here we go. 86 plus 10. This is the math page that Ms. Blanche showed you a few minutes ago. Same idea. You need to be able. Now, Somebody's going to say, well, Ms. Blaine, I don't know what to do if I do it, and then I'm not sure. Check your work. You got 10 fingers. If you need them, use them. But use them as your check, not as your way to get the answer. I want them to be your method of checking, self-check, not your method of doing it. You will not have time when we go back to school to do this on every one of them. So 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86. I'm at 86. But you're not going to have time to do that on every question. You should use that as your check. If you're not sure of your answer, then use your fingers, toes, pennies, butter beans, whatever you got. But it should be a checking method, moms and dads as well. 
We cannot afford for them to think they can count out every one of them all the time. Of course, 10 minus, we're going to do countdown 92, 91, 90. What's next? 89, 88, 87, 86, 85, 84, 83, 82. What's 82? I use it as a check. You should do the same if you need it. The ones are easy. You know how to add one and you know how to take one away. At the bottom, you're just filling in your number. On the second side, you are circling what the pattern is. What rule did it follow? What was the pattern for how they came to that answer? And then down at the bottom, you got to do double duty. You got to fill in the pattern of the two missing numbers and tell me what pattern it's following. So you got two parts to that. <clears throat> now, here you're going to see those arrow methods that we've talked about before. Make sure you watch your arrows, watch the sign on the arrow, and watch the number. Maybe a 10, and it may be a 1, and it may be a plus sign, and it may be a minus sign. So watch those arrows so that you know which way the arrow, what um, value the arrow is going to have you do, 1 or 10, and you'll know whether it's plus or minus. So be careful. <clears throat> on your color, the answer sheet. I gave the guys some options this morning. This is just exact review of your error method. You're looking at 56, it's plus 10. We know it's 66. You can do then X out. You just take your pencil and X out the correct answer. Um, you can scribble over it, like just take your pencil and go scribble, scribble, scribble. That's my answer. If you choose to color the box like the directions say, I do ask that you use a highlighter or a crayon because coloring with the pencil gets super, super messy for the pages that are on the, when they rub together you'll throw this in your book bag or you'll bring it to school and we'll throw it in a box and so they rub together really bad so it's real important that you make sure that if they're rubbing is with a crayon or highlighter so don't use the pencil to do the coloring in it and of course our mystery picture you're going to follow the arrows and where they go and when you find your number you'll write it on the line number one ended up being 93 because 51 plus 10 was 61 plus 1 was 62 plus 10 was 72, plus 1 was 73, plus 10 was 83, plus 10 was 93. When you got to 93, we color the box. You will do the same for number 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. They are not numbered, but they go straight down in order as normal. All right, that's all the packet pages for today. So what are you expected to do now? Go to sleep? Oh, Evans, no. I don't want you to go to sleep. I want to see what you know. I want you to go back through that packet and everything from Monday. I need you to finish it. I need you to finish it to the best of your ability. I need you to make sure that if you have a question, you reach out and let Ms. Bland know what your question is so we can get you an answer. I need you to go into Seesaw and I need you to finish your Seesaw activities for today. Seesaw activities for today <clears throat> are spelling words, math, nouns and adjectives, and your story is there if you need it for your work, if you don't want to use the one in your video. Remember your Bailey specials. You can do media today if you like, because this is going to be our media day. And we don't have an assignment in Epic today, but if you just want to read a cool book, that's the place to start. So Monday's complete. Now, if you have a question. Ms. Bland is here. I'm going to be working on some stuff for next week's packet, but I'm sitting at my computer. Um, if you have a question and you need to see me, like a dojo message won't answer your question, if you will send, have mom and dad say, hey, I need to talk to Ms. Bland, if they'll send me the message first, I will send them a link back and we can do, um, Zoom and just me and you and we can talk about whatever it is you don't know. And you can show me your paper and I can tell you about how to tilt your computer screen down so I can see what you're writing and we can work through it. So if you need help, you are not alone. Ms. Lane is here to help you and always will in any way I possibly can. Bailey Specials website in case somebody needed a reminder. Remember that if you're watching this video, I need to know you've seen it. Seesaw counts for attendance. A note to Ms. Bland. Uh, an emoji, happy face, thumbs up, apple, pig, something. And then, of course, you can send me a picture of a completed page. Have a great rest of your day. I tried to tell the boys and girls this morning I was going to wear my hair like that tomorrow, and they said no. So I guess I won't. But I thought it was a cool idea. I mean, like we could spray paint it and everything. But mm, I'll try to find another hairstyle for tomorrow. But... I hope you guys have a great afternoon. If you need something, please reach out to Ms. Bland and let me know what it is I can do to help you. If there's anything you need, supply-wise, um, pencil, crayon, whatever, please let me know. We have some available things at school that people have donated, and I'd be more than happy to send one home with your packet for the week. Have a great week. Be amazing. If you need something as the week goes on, just let me know.
Be safe. Have a great night. See you in the morning or see my video tomorrow. Take care.